Hello boys and girls, I'd like to introduce you to my uh, drill indexing jig. Um, just one of my latest sort of creations. It's made out of MDF, a um, couple of pieces of MDF, laminated together as you can see with dowling pins to just align them, making glue up easier. Um, the hardware I use in it is basically a quarter inch bolt going through that. Um, Bit rough, at, bit rough on the bottom here because this was a prototype and effectively the hardware, the main uh, items of hardware is just a spring and a ball bearing. The way it sits together, the spring goes in there, the ball bearing goes in there and keep your eye on that little sucker because it tends to have a mind of its own and go everywhere. And you put it together and you put the hardware on it. Um, nuts and bolts, but as all good cooking shows say, I have one already baked, so here is a jig already assembled. Now you'll notice that this one, this particular jig, is in the 20 or 5, 10, 20 indexing configuration. Basically, it's got uh, um, 20 locating or 20 holes in it to allow four multiples of five, whatever, whatever's 20 divisible by um, indexing. This other one, I'll go and get that for you. Oops, let's not lose all the hardware. That's uh, got three, four, six, and eight. Um, it's got 24 indexes. I'm not going to, I didn't bother marking uh, 12 because uh, 24 divided by 12 is 2, and I think even the dummiest, biggest dummy, I should say, can do that. So, but that basically, all it is, it's there, is once you start moving and you start losing your reference, at least you re remember how many indexes you want, you can put it on the appropriate number and you've got it right, pretty well foolproof. Okay, the way I use it is, there's this little spacer here on top of that, um, I use, again, I, I use um, dowels, aligning dowels, you know, I mean, they're brilliant. The idea of this is basically to give clearance for the washer and the nut that's there. What I then have is what I classify as a zero clearance or zero clearance fence or whatever. Depending on the size of the wheel, you can have a small one or a big one. They're interchangeable. However, be aware... And it, it really depends on the size of the, uh, the wheel you or whatever you want to index or drill holes in. However, just bear in mind that if you actually make that backing plate too big, then you're going to obscure the numbers and uh, up to 10 is not a problem, but after 10 you run out of fingers, so uh, it's a bit harder to count. Um, then again, bear in mind that that will allow you to, depending on where you want to put your your uh, circular set of uh, holes, um, you know, that might be in the centre, so you can actually take quite a big wheel, but it's still going to cover up the numbers. Anyway, um, for the exercise, I started, I initially tried just a six on this uh, little uh, rim. However, I've used that, and it's no use just showing you that because that doesn't prove anything. While I'm fortunate with regards to a laser, um, I can cut this configuration out without much trouble. There's 20 holes around there and five around there, which is quite handy with a bit of luck I can make it with this jig. Um, now, just as a matter of interest, if I wanted to cut it on here, one of the things it does do is I've got this little plastic sleeve. Oh, slipper sucker. Oh, there it goes again. Um, 3D printed, which actually fits over the quarter inch dowel or quarter inch uh, bolt and it centers a 8mm or 5 16th hole, which are usually the two alternatives for um, T and J models, which is a quarter inch or 5 16th. However, to make things easier, I've actually cut these out in, good God. Supposed to be a quarter inch. I'll get it on there. No, it won't. I might have to reel. Oh, of course. <laughs> you idiot. 
I've got my centering pin in there. No wonder it wouldn't fit on. There you are. And what I'll do is now I'll take it over to the drill press and uh, see what damage I can do to it. Okay, catch you there. Okay, here we are at my new fangled dangled Nova DVR drill press. And uh, some of you might actually say, oh geez, it comes with a bloody small chuck. But no, actually, I've got a keyless chuck that only goes from 3mm to 16mm. And bloody TNJ would like to use 364th Dow, which is just a bit under 3 mil. So I've had to fit this uh, Dremel chuck that I use um, to this. Now, let's just use this sample wheel to do it. Now, before we do anything else, let's mark a reference point. Now, notice this wheel is 8 mil in diameter, so I'm actually using my little magical little sleeve here to line it up and all I need is just two reference points I hope this will work hang on I'll just move it out here one for the inside hole and just one for the outside hole there you are hopefully that should do me now let's start we'll go for the we'll be daring we'll go for the outside hole Hang on, this drill automatically starts, so I better turn the self-start off, and good God, bear with me, I have to work out self-start, oops, no, wrong, self-start off, which I've done. Now let's go back here, because with the self-start it'll actually start as I lower it to line up this hole. Now all I do is I need to reference it so I can then place the jig and clamp oops go on clamp it down actually I could have held the thing in there that's cool ready to go now one of the things I will do I've got it set on zero let's set the good god set the auto start on On. hopefully I've got the bottom clearance right and or sorry the auto stop and let's give it a go now it's buzzing telling me it's about to start and it starts you'll notice that once you go down it stops now this is where you've got to before you move anything you need this handy little locator pin to mark that through the thing so it just won't move out of place and then you've got it okay so off we go now first hole oh i do this all the time i should hold that piece in there maybe what i might do is i might go and get a what's his name A nut to hold it down saves me having to keep my finger on it hang on I'm all thumbs now bear with me actually a wing nut might have been easier but wing nuts too far away and I'm too lazy to walk that far okay that'll do we've gone to the next one yep uh, hopefully we've gone to the next one yes we have Look, I'll turn the camera off. I mean, it's ridiculous to do do this only because of me having to wait for the thing. And I'll come back to you when I'm on, on about the last hole. Okay, two more holes to go on this configuration. So let's go for it. Come on, drill. You'll notice I've cranked up the speed of the drill a little bit. Uh, there was nothing wrong with the speed I had it on, but... Uh, Come on. Okay. Now we've done that. Now, 
as you'll notice, um, I can leave that pin in there. And now what I need to do is line it up on the next hole. Well, see, now this is where the problem is with the auto start. You can see it auto started. Now let's just assume, I'm not going to bother too much because it's only a sample, but let's just assume I've lined it up properly and I've got it there. So now this time we're only going for five holes. So, oh hang on, let's get it on the proper thing. Oh no, we've, we've put it onto that one, so, oh well, we'll go this way, yep. Now, because we're making five holes, we need to go four distance. One, two, three, four, down. Come on, baby. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Geez, it just about starts when on cue when I'm ready. How's that? Blow the crap away. Take out this locator bin and don't try and lose it because... You always need one, and if you have a look, oh, well, you probably can't have a look, but that compared to that, I mean, it's laser cut, but hell, that's not too shabby. I think he's done a bloody good job. Hang on, can you see that? Oh, no, there you are. We'll try that again. As you can see, that's not too shabby. He's done a bloody good job. Get rid of the bit of a tear out, you know, we'll need a bit of sanding. Um, it's held up pretty well with regards to the backing, especially for such a small little drill bit. Um, I'm quite happy with that. And uh, we'll leave it at that. So, thank you for watching. Bye. Right, back to the jig. Uh, just a final closing stage. I tried a wing nut on there, just to hold that piece down so it doesn't stop from being lifted by the drill bit. Um, no, not good enough because of the close pattern the wing nut will interfere with the drill bit so that's fair enough. I tried a quarter inch, uh, a full size um, quarter inch nut. Um, initially I tightened it up a bit too tight which meant that it kept self tightening as I was spinning this around. Um, that wasn't a very good idea at all. So I haven't tightened it up that much and it's not moving. Well, while it's not moving, it's not self-tightening, which is good. Um, the other alternative is to put a, whoops, dropsy, a bearing in there like I've done with my uh, um, other jigs. Hang on, I'll just move this around a bit so you can, oh, how does this work? Um, through there, I've got uh, bearings in there, so maybe... Um, a bearing in there might uh, minimise the, oops, or might ease the movement, we'll see. But that, that could be a later enhancement, however, um, as long as that's not tightening, that seems to be moving okay. And it does work, as I say, exactly the same with that configuration. And then if you've got any other weird configurations, you can always come up with them. The only limitation really is to get the whole spacings, not so much right, but in such a way that there's sufficient clearance um, for it to work, I mean, to worry about. So anyway, that's the jig. That's how it is. As you can see, it's done a fair job of replicating what, fortunately, I can do with a laser. The only shortcoming is that basically <laughs> you need a laser to make this so you can not have to do laser cuts. If that makes sense to you. 
Now, where the hell did I put my little plastic sleeve? Okay, I'm going to go and hunt for that. Catch you later.